Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another 10 pens currently inked this week. I think let's go through these briefly one by one. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail and then we'll do a writing sample. So from left to right, we have the Montegrappa and this is the extra high tech. We have the uh, Magna Carta and this is the Oxford. We have the Parker Duofold and this is the 130th anniversary craft of traveling. We have the Anoto, and this is the Longitude. We have an Anoto, and this is the Magna Classic in the Chased Amber. We have the Santini, and this is the Libra in the Ambra. We have a Mr. Cypress, and this is the Maple in the Woods. We have another Mr. Cypress, and this is the Eggshell 01. Another Mr. Cypress, and this is the Eggshell 05A and then we have another Mr. Cypress and this is the eggshell 06. So I think let's go through these pens in a little bit more detail. So this is the Montegrappa Extra High Tech and this is quite an interesting pen. It's uh, a titanium sort of clip and trim with I believe aluminium there as the cap. And then you've got this carbon fiber weave going on. Uh, so this is quite an interesting uh, sort of combination there. And if you look at the cat band, you'll see Montegrappa uh, and uh, a lovely pattern. Uh, the cap is a little bit textured. These holes are uh, not, um, not rough in texture, but you do kind of feel these holes, these little divots. Uh, and if I unscrew the cap, you'll see a titanium uh, section here. Uh, and uh, you see a number eight size Montegrappa nib. And uh, this is a uh, medium nib. Um, but this is actually a, a nice pen. Um, and I decided I would ink this one up this week. You can post the cap on this one as well. Um, it is a cartridge converter. It is not a... A piston filling pen like a lot of Montegrappers. Uh, they do seem to do a bit of a mix between cartridge converters and piston fillers. Uh, but this one is a cartridge converter. The next pen I've not inked up for some time. And this is a Magna Carta from India. And I have to say I really like the honeycomb uh, effect. And also that it's uh, I think 20... Four carat gold plated, um, uh, really really nice uh, pen. It's over a, I believe, a brass body. Uh, you can see a textured section there, a, a number six size, a Magna Carta steel nib there, um, and again, it's a cartridge converter. Uh, I'm going to re-ink this one back up this week, uh, but it's one that I've not uh, written with for a while, and I thought I would bring it back out. You can post the cap, but it won't post deeply. But it, it will post somewhat securely. So uh, I can't shake the the cap off there. But it's a decent size in my hand. So I, I feel that I don't need to post it. But I do like uh, the gold uh, finish here. Uh, and you can see their Magna Carta in uh, the cap band. Uh, so that, that's another one um, I'm going to have inked up this week. Uh, the next one is The Art of Travelling, and this is the Parker Duofold 130th Anniversary. Uh, beautiful pen uh, with a lapis lazuli stone. Uh, I really love uh, the contrast between this gold cap, or gold plated cap, and the blue uh, picture here. So the, the gold cap you can see is uh, has a lovely sort of global pattern there. And then, obviously, the body, you have uh, essentially the map of the world. So it is the art of traveling. Um, this is a Parker Duofold Centennial size, or it's very similar to a Prestige, like the blue Chevron. Uh, it comes with a number six size nib, but you've also got the art of traveling anniversary nib on there as well. And uh, this is a number six size Parker nib and 
uh, just having a look there, it is a fine nib that you can see there. Um, it is a cartridge converter pen as well, and uh, I can show you that here as well. If I unscrew that. Now, it is pretty much out of ink, so I'm going to need to refill this one um, because it probably will run out of ink uh, in the writing sample. The next pen uh, inked up here is uh, the Anoto Longitude, and uh, this uh, has metals, coins, recovered from the shipwreck of the Association and uh, made into this pen. So you have the ship's wheel here, uh, and also the, the rope as well that you would see on a ship, a, a lovely big anchor clip as well, uh, and then the, the sea or wind here the waves and then you can see longitude here so uh, this is a really nice pen I, I do like it when anoso make pens like this uh, and it does have the latitude and longitude of the actual wreck of the uh, association ship uh, comes with a number six size um, a noto nib uh, it's a medium nib uh, i can post a cap on this as well if i want to it is a bit back, back weighted though so uh this is not a pen that you really want to post that cap unless unless you want to build up the muscles in your your hand your forearm because you're going to be wrestling with this quite a bit because there's a lot of metal on the back end of this pen when you post that cap but uh it's a nice pen and I, i'm glad that i'm writing uh, with that pen uh this week the next pen, and you can see here, this is quite short compared to the Anoto Longitude. Um, but this is uh, a, a Anoto Magna Classic, and this uh, is in the Chased Amber Pearl. So again, uh, you can see a Noto there in the coin cap finial. Uh, you've got a clip. Uh, again, these clips are typically made of silver. So they are soft, but not too soft. But you do have to be careful not to to bend those clips too far because if you do they may not go back at least that's what Anoto tell me so you, you do have to be wary of that uh, but this has a lovely chased amber pearl material I picked this one up second hand and I'm glad I did I've always wanted one of these with the chased effect in, in the amber pearl and uh, I have to say I am loving this pen uh, it is a lighter version, so it doesn't have the um, brass insert in the body to add a little bit of weight. So it is it is the lighter version. Uh, it comes with number six size, 18 cat gold medium nib that you can see there as well. Uh, the In the size of my hand, it's actually a decent size, and I can post that cat quite deeply and securely. Uh, it's not really back weighted because of that cap. So... Uh, the only thing I would say is that uh, if you want a slightly more front-weighted pen, then maybe the uh, brass insert in the cap will help uh, if you then post that cap. Uh, I, I know a lot of people actually do go for the brass insert, and if I have the option, I will do it. But uh, I think the the two Anoto Magna Classics I bought, uh, the... Yeah, I'm thinking the Chased Green and the Chased Amber have been second-hand. Uh, the Christmas Cow one that I have uh, was brand new, but I I didn't have the option of, of getting that in uh, the brass insert into the barrel. The next pen I've really not uh, written with in a long time, and this is the Santini uh, Libra in uh, the Amber. And um, I have to say... I. It's been a few years uh, since I bought this pen. I, I think it was, was it? It was around the pandemic, I think, when 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 I bought this pen. Uh, and Santini, I saw them uh, on video on uh, at the DC show recently. So hats off to them for flying out to the DC show. Um, there's a slight ink window here, but it's very hard to see. Um, but I, I I like this. It comes with their own. Uh, in-house nibs uh, Santini then they do say that they make them in-house and you've got the ebonite feed there as well uh, these are piston filling pens and I, I've got two I've got the Libra and the Laurel um, sorry the Libra in the amber and the Libra in the Laurel and uh, they are nice pens and um, I do 
I do find like with some pistons, because it's a piston filling pen, that it does have a bit of an airlock. So sometimes you have to keep priming the piston just to get the ink to flow wetter. Uh, it, it, it's just one of those where it has a little bit of an airlock on it. Um, other than that, they are nice writing nibs. Uh, and these are the, the flex nibs uh, that, that I have on, on the Santini. Uh, the next pen inked up uh, pen I bought uh, in, this summer was uh, the Mr. Cypress uh, Maple in the Woods. And really love this pen. It's a, a beautiful work of Mackie, Arushi. Uh, really, really stunning. And uh, when I saw this, there, there was only one available. And, and there were a bunch of pens from Mr. Cypress that I wanted. And I didn't want to go and buy five or six all in one go. Because uh, that would have taken a hit on my credit card, probably, uh, and my bank account. But um, I did spread them out over a number of weeks. And uh, I looked at the pens and, and I looked at the ones that were literally only one in stock and decided to order those first. And this was one of them. So unfortunately, I don't think you'll get to see this pen again at Mr. Cyprus. Um, but uh, it has a number six size, Mr. Cyprus, 14 cat gold nib. A lovely sparkly section there. Uh, in terms of the size of the pen, it's really good in my hand. Uh, the cap will not post. Uh, there is a bit of a step down because it is a flush cap. When you put that cap on, it is flush between the cap and the body there. And quite a bit of texture as well, but I love that. Um, I think it would have been nice if the, the pen was more of a a glossy finish where you didn't feel the texture but i also am liking the texture to that pen so uh, i think with a, a lot of my arushi and Mackie, uh, i think a lot of it is like a, a lack of finish so you don't feel the texture in a lot of cases the next pen inked up is this one and uh it's again a mr cypress it's an eggshell zero one and i do believe um uh, recording this anyway that that these were still available on mr cypress um you can get these all most of the mr cypress i actually i think all of the mr cypress pens come with a steel nib then you can upgrade to a gold nib if you want you have the the option of a 14 karat gold mr cypress nib for an extra 90 us dollars uh, an 18 karat gold mr cypress nib for 120 us dollars or if you want a bok or yovo gold nib you're looking I think it was 180 uh, US dollars. So still pretty good uh, in terms of a, for a Bock or Yovo nib. Uh, however, um, uh, I, I went for the Mr. Cypress nibs. I, I do like the eggshell and the blackness, the void or darkness. And then the lovely abalone shell there in stripes or strips. Does have a very slight sort of uh, sparkly section. A number six size, 14 cat gold nib. Uh, these are these are cartridge converters. Actually, just looking, all of these are cartridge converters except for the Santini. Um, there is a bit of a step down because again, it's a flush finish. It's a number six, 14 cat gold nib. Uh, but I am liking that pen, so I have that one inked up this week as well. I have uh, this one inked up, and uh, this is, again, a Mr. Cypress, but it's the Eggshell 05A. There is a B, uh, and the only difference between A and B was where the Raden was on the pen. So slightly different variations of the pen, uh, but you can see there lots of eggshell. Uh, the Mr. Cypress use um, duck's egg, uh, which isn't quite as... Uh, thin and fragile as quail's eggs, uh, but uh, th they are very nice white eggs, I would say. Uh, and a huge amount of Varden that you can see there, that it really, the abalone shell is really, really beautiful. Uh, again, another flush finish between uh, the cap and the body. A very sparkly section and a number six size 14 cat gold Mr. Cypress nib. Uh, cartridge converter, slight step down there. However, I, I like it, you, but you cannot post the cap. So uh, if you are a cap poster, make sure that you try to avoid 
pens that have flush finishes between the cap and the body because uh, otherwise um, you probably will not be able to post those caps. And then the last pen here is again another Mr. Cypress. It's the Eggshell 06. Uh, and I really, really love this pen. Beautiful work of art. As with the others, but, but the eggshell here, the Varden, the amount of Varden or, or abalone shell on on the, the cap and body is, is immense. So uh, I do like that. Again, another seamless transition there between the cap and the body. And I'll show you if I unscrew that. Uh, again, a slightly sparkly section and also a uh, number six size, Mr. Cypress. Uh, this one's an 18 karat gold, not 14 karat gold. Uh, I actually realized I could save a bit of money by going for the 14 karat gold nib on each pen. And as I knew I was going to buy a few of these uh, pens, and clearly I have, uh, I decided that uh, I could probably uh, save enough to actually make or save enough for another pen. Um, so I I've currently got uh five of the mr cypress pens four in this tray at the moment that are inked up this week uh but i do have another two uh on order and so that will be number six and number seven so yeah that's um down a rabbit hole pretty quickly i would say but i do like arushi i do like makie so from that perspective i think it's okay but yeah, um, seven pens in probably in a couple of months actually uh, is is quite quite a lot of, of pens there. So that's my ten pens currently inked up this week. I think let's now go and do a writing sample. So uh, the first pen here is the Montegrappa Extra High Tech. So we'll do an ink swatch here and. Uh, I find this nib writes really nicely um, and also the ink is uh, a little bit sort of moderately wet but not too wet. So this is the Montegrappa Extra High Tech uh, and uh, it's a medium and it's an 18 cat gold nib. And then the ink in here is KWZ and it's Cappuccino. Which uh, is an ink I really do like. Uh, it's a, a very, very nice ink. The next pen is the Magna Carta and this is the Oxford. So we'll do uh, an ink swatch here. Now this is uh, a uh, medium... I think it's a medium nib. Let me just double check that, actually. It is a medium nib, um, but I find it writes a little bit more like a fine nib. So this is the uh, Magna Carta uh, Oxford. And it's a uh, medium. Uh, it's a steel nib, uh, in-house nib made by Magna Carta. Uh, and then the ink in here is uh, Diamine uh, and uh, it's Oxblood. The next pen here inked up is the Parker 130th Anniversary Duo Fold. And uh, I did say that this is actually running on fumes. So let's see if we can get enough out of uh, this pen. So this is the Parker 130th Anniversary Duo Fold. Uh, and it's uh, a fine nib. Uh, and it's an 18 count gold nib. And uh, the ink in here is at Lamy. Uh, turquoise which is actually looking uh, quite um, dark uh, but I am literally out of ink so it's probably oxidized a little bit in the pen I would say 
um, as the water has, has evaporated. The next pen here is the Anoto Longitude. So we'll do an ink swatch. And I've always thought that the Lamy Turquoise is really not that turquoise. And uh, I'd have to say that this uh, is more of a turquoise than, than the Lamy Turquoise, uh, even though it's not a turquoise ink. So this is the Anoto uh, Longitude. And it's a medium and it's an 18 count gold uh, nib from Anoto, which is made by Bok. And then the ink in here is Pelican Edelstein Topaz. But that really is, is more of a lighter blue, I would say. The next pen inked up is the Anoto Magna Classic in the Chased Amber Pearl. And we'll do an ink swatch. And we are definitely in autumn months now in the Northern Hemisphere. So uh, I, I think this is a fitting pen for that or fitting ink as well. Uh, so this is the Anoto uh, Magna Classic in chased amber, and it's the pearl, um, but it's uh, a, a medium 18 cap gold nib. And the ink in here is a Jehaban, and it's Ambre de Bermany. And I, I would say that there are several inks. Uh, that that really bring out autumn in me. Um, one is Jehaban Ambre de Bermany. The other is uh, Diamine Autumn Oak. They are really two good autumn coloured inks. So if you want to be writing with an autumn coloured ink, then I would definitely uh, choose those. Uh, you could probably go with maybe some browns like Diamine Ochre, um, probably Pilot Washizuku Sakushi, a horse's tail, like chestnutty color. You could go for some of those as well. The next pen is a Santini Libra, and this is in the amber. So we'll do an ink swatch. And I do like the flexi nibs in, in this pen quite a lot. Um, but this is a fine nib, 14 cat. So this is the Santini uh, Libra uh, in the Ambra and uh, the uh, uh, nib on here is a fine and I'm just double checking I'm pretty sure it's a, a 14 carat gold nib oh no it's an 18 yeah it is an 18 carat gold nib I thought for some reason because it was a flex nib it was 14 and then the ink in here is also Herban Ambre de Bermany. So um, you can see the difference here in various pens on how this ink writes. And you would almost think that that's two different colored inks because it is very, very different. The next pen inked up is the Mr. Cypress Maple in the Woods. And... Actually, I'm thinking about this now. I hadn't thought about this before, but are there any maple named inks out there? Because if there are, I probably need to get some. So if there are any with maple in the name, let me know in the comments below because I would like to actually buy a maple colored ink. But is a maple colored ink red or is it brown? Um, it'll be interesting to see. So uh, let me know if you... Uh, know of any that, that have the name Maple in the ink name. Or even maybe that would be a good fit for uh, a Maple colour. Uh, I, I think Maple has honey more than anything. Like maple honey. Um, so this is the Mr. Cypress. Uh, and it's the Maple in the Woods. I guess because it's maple in the woods, woods are brown, so uh, you could I could put a brown ink in here as well. Uh, I might actually 
do that, or a reddish brown, or a brownish red, maybe. Uh, it's a medium, and it's a 14 cat gold nib. Uh, and, and the ink in here is the same as the last two, actually. It's Herban, or J Herban, and it's Ambre de Bermany. So, again, you get to see this ink in three different pens. And uh, this one is maybe a mid-color. This one's a very dark brown, and then this one is, is lighter than the mid one. So, uh, it's interesting how the color and also the the hue or the shade changes quite a bit. The next pen inked up is a, a Mr. Cypress Eggshell 01. So we'll do an ink swatch here. And I, I, I've actually, I've actually bought medium nibs on all of my Mr. Cypress pens, but I'm now actually wondering if I um, made a little bit of an error there because although these are nice and they're great for writing letters, I also like a little bit wider width in, in a broad. So I've already ordered two pens <laughs> that are going to be mediums. So if I do order any more, I think I might try a broad. Maybe one in Bach and one in Yovo uh, in, in gold, uh, probably 14 karat gold. So I, I can then try and maybe swap the nibs around perhaps. So this is a Mr. Cypress. And it's the eggshell 01 uh, in a medium, uh, 14 count gold nib. And there's nothing wrong with a medium nib. I, I, I typically go for mediums all the time. Sometimes I go for fine. Sometimes I, I, I think probably the majority of the time it's a medium, then a broad, then a fine uh, is typically what I go for. Uh, and then the ink in here is Pilot, Eroshizuku. Aji say but that uh, is a beautiful ink uh another ink that's similar is um uh is it herban I th i'm thinking of um it's eclat de saphir um which is a another another good good color ink the next pen inked up is a mr cypress eggshell 05a and, and the a just denotes uh the uh, where where the abalone Raden is on the pen. Um, I, I do wonder who comes up with the names. Uh, I don't know if it's the artisan or if it's Mr. Cypress. I, I think there probably is a bit of a language barrier there as well. So it's easier just to say eggshell one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I, I'd, I'd like to maybe be a little bit more inventive with the names and maybe I'll rename these in my collection moving forward um but this is the mr cypress eggshell 05a in a medium 14 cat gold nib and then the ink in here is uh Rora and klinger And it's Verdura. And then the last pen inked up is a Mr. Cypress Eggshell 06. So we'll do an ink swatch. And I do still have this inked up with the same ink. Um, I think uh, I have flossed the times on this, but the ink is quite dry. Um, I'm tempted to put another ink in here, but I'm also tempted to floss the times a little bit more. Uh, but it, it is a dry ink, and typically I find tealy coloured turquoisey inks a little bit more on the dry side. Um, but this is uh, Mr. Cypress, and it's the uh, eggshell 06 medium, and it's an 18 karat gold, this one nib. Uh, and then the ink in here is Pelican. Edelstein Appetite. So I think let's take a look at these pens inked up one more time. We have a Montegrappa Extra High Tech in a medium 18 count gold nib inked up with KWZ Cappuccino. We have a Magna Carta Oxford in a medium steel nib inked up with Diamine Oxblood. 
we have a Parker Durofold 130th anniversary in a fine 18 cat gold nib inked up with Lamy turquoise. We have an Anota Longitude in a medium 18 cat gold nib inked up with Pelican Edelstein Topaz. We have an Anoto Magna Classic in the Chased Amber in a medium 18 cat gold nib inked up with J. Herban Amber de Bermany. We have a Centini Libra Amber in a fine 18 cat gold nib inked up with Herban again Amber de Bermany. We have a Mr. Cypress Maple in the Woods in a medium 14 cat gold nib inked up again with J. Herban Amber de Bermany. We have a Mr. Cypress Eggshell 01. Uh, in a medium 14 cat gold nib inked up with Pilot Wash Azuku Aji Say. We have a Mr. Cypress Eggshell 05A in a medium 14 cat gold nib inked up with War and Klinger Verdura. And then last but not least, we have a Mr. Cypress Eggshell 06 in a medium 18 cat gold nib inked up with Pelican Edelstein Appetite. So there you have it. That's my county ink pens for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.